guys, I'm Sarah. My daughter has given me the opportunity to try this recipe. It's been in the back of my mind for ages, making my own cream cheese out of powdered milk. Of course, making milk out of milk powder, it does end up cheaper than buying it already, you know, as is from the supermarket, for most people anyway. It's a personal preference thing, but I'm thinking if I can make cream cheese with it. Now, I worked out this would be about half the price, depending on where you buy your cream cheese from, depending where you get your milk powder from. Prices are all over the place at the moment, so this, this will cost about $2 to make about 250 grams of cream cheese. At the moment, today's pricing. So I'll just use some water from my jug that's already a bit warm, but I'm going to start heating up three cups of water. And I'm going to put in here two cups of milk powder. I just use this stuff, the good old pans. At the moment, it's about, I think, $11.90 for the Pam's standard milk for a, for a one kg packet of it. Now, of course, when you're actually making normal milk from milk powder, it would be much more diluted than this, but because we're attempting to make cream cheese here, <laughs> we, we need it mixed much thicker. And we want to keep stirring this until it's, it's just started boiling, and then we turn the heat off. All right, it's just starting to come to a boil now. So now what I'm gonna do is, Turn the heat off and put in about four tablespoons of white vinegar. Apparently you can also use lemon juice. You just want to get something nice and acidic so it starts curdling. As soon as you put that in, you'll see all that starts separating. I've just got a half tablespoon measure here, so I'm gonna put eight of these in. halfway through, it's really gentle. Try not to break, break any of the nice chunky stuff that's forming. Look at that, that is working so well. So you can see all that yellowy liquid, that's, that's basically the way. Solid stuff is the curds. I'm just gonna let that, oh look that's separating out beautifully. This will be really gentle stirring that, you don't wanna break it up too much. is very very similar to making um, cottage cheese and I'll link my cottage cheese recipe down below I, I make that every now and then just to save on a bit of buying cheese from the supermarket <laughs> bowl to drain the whey into then we just want either a colander or a sieve something like that in there cheesecloth muslin cloth something you know really really fine type cloth for it to drain through Pour that into here. Just gonna let that sit and drain for about 10 minutes and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so it's been draining a bit. Got a lovely way underneath there. Chuck it in a blender 
Give it a mix up until it's really smooth and I'm just going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt or just a little pinch of salt in there too. See, this is why I get annoyed by blenders. They just, you know, they do the middle and never mind the outside. I get all these comments now telling me I shouldn't be doing that with my blender, jiggling it around. I'm sure everyone does that, surely. I'm not the only one that does that. This is getting nice and thick and smooth. Have we taste? A little bit grainy textured, needs a bit more wazing. I'm actually going to have a quick go over this with my stick blender because I was just getting annoyed with the stand mixer. I've been told if it's a bit on the dry side, can add a little bit more whey and I might do that because I've got a feeling it is slightly dryish. Add an extra teaspoon of the whey in there just to uh just so it's not too dry. Make sure it's at room temperature then put it in the fridge for a couple of hours. I'll do a final taste test and give you my verdict. Sorry, just while I was waiting for it to cool down, I decided to put it into a cup. It's made pretty much one cup. That weighs about 230 grams. So, there you go. I've just pulled this out of the fridge. It is smelling cream cheesy, I think. Now, here's the thing. The only fair way of doing a comparison is to actually buy some cream cheese. <laughs> Which kind of now negates the whole me making it to make the cheesecake cheaper because now I've bought some. Oh, hey, look, it's going it's to be a bigger than normal cheesecake, all right? It's the way we roll. Smell wise, this stuff is much stronger, the bought stuff. It's the same product, if you know what I mean. But the store bought stuff just has that real distinctive you can't miss it cream cheese flavor this homemade stuff it's it's stronger than cottage cheese but it's more it, it is a lot more subtle i could probably still get away with i'd i will still use this with making the cheesecake that's something you've made <laughs> That's the real deal. Yeah. Damn it, there there is a quite a difference, isn't there? Um that there. What does it need? It needs to be mixed better. So you probably have to go for a bit of warm water and some serious to actually atomize it. Alright, now I've done a bit of fiddling <laughs> with this cream cheese. It's looking awesome. Um, now, on, as per my husband's recommendation, I left it 24 hours. Consistency wise, pretty good. I, I gave it another really, really big ways, as you saw, and I actually added a few more spoonfuls of the whey back into it because it was just, it was a little bit dry and a little bit grainy. But that just that just brought it up. It is it is beautiful. It is it is creamy consistency wise. It's great. It is not grainy anymore. I just had to wet it up better than I had done. Flavor wise, it was really tasting just like milk. You know, there there wasn't really that tang to it. And so I did a bit of research. Now apparently a lot of people, to get that distinctive sort of cream cheese tang, if you like, I don't know, is tang the right word? But you know what I mean, it's got a really distinctive flavor to it. And um, a lot of people, when they're, when they're draining it, they actually add either buttermilk or Greek yogurt into it. So anyway, I, I stirred through a couple of, sort of a, a couple of heaped teaspoons of Greek yogurt and I decided to put it back in the fridge, let it chill for a while, so taste test time. I, I shouldn't be tasting off a knife, should I? I'm a bad influence, don't do what I do. Oh no, that's better. Colour-wise, they're a bit different. The bought stuff is very white, whereas my stuff is a little bit more on the sort of creamy side. Mmm. 
Okay, now taste wise, it's not the same, but it's getting there. It's pretty much every homemade cream cheese recipe is very similar. Not many of them will actually give you a description of the taste afterwards. So I thought, well, this is quite crucial if you really, really want that distinctive flavor. Adding that bit of Greek yogurt to it made quite a difference. It has got that cream cheese flavor, but it is very, very subtle. It does taste, it tastes fresh. It does taste milky and it has got that slight sort of extremely subtle cream cheese tang to it. Not as strong as the store-bought stuff. Well, this cost $5 something and this cost $2 something to make. And weight-wise, they're about similar. So, you know, it is gonna, it is gonna save you a couple of dollars. But, you know, every single thing that you do that just saves you a couple of dollars, it adds up. So, it's worth doing if you really are penny-pinching. Yeah, give give this a go people seriously um it's it is worth doing um especially if as i say if you do have the greek yogurt or i'm not quite sure what buttermilk tastes like it's been a while since i bought it if you've got buttermilk or something with a bit of a tang just to add in there i mean even maybe a bit of lemon ooh, would lemon juice work probably even if you use lemon juice maybe instead of the vinegar when you're when you're separating the curds from the whey maybe that might add a bit more of that tang hit like leave us a comment hit subscribe i'll let you know the cheesecake went <laughs> catch you next week bye